the specular intensity here does almost uh, does somewhat of the same thing but specularity is pretty much the uh, like if you see like a hot spot in an object that has a, a light on it the specular intensity is pretty much what that is it's almost like reflection so if I turn this up you can see that the picture gets hotter and I turn it down you don't see that hot spot in the middle anymore and by the hot spot if I zoom in here you can see around this edge here where that where that light is really hot that's the hot spot and I'll set that back down to what it was at 50 and lastly the other, another thing that affects uh, how much light your object is getting is is going to be the intensity of the light so if you come in if you double click on the layer there's an intensity section here and if I lower that then the light is going to have be less intense and if you go into the negatives it's going to suck out light which is kinda weird but it has its uses put that back onto a hundred and of course if you have a layer that's blocking another layer um, from uh, receiving light and casting shadows on it or something like that then that of course is going to affect the brightness of the light of the layer there is another um, factor that comes into when you're determining how bright something's going to be and that's called ambient now if I come back down to the material options again there is this section called ambient and this is the the amount of light that is already on the scene and this uh, JPEG isn't really affected too much by the ambient at all so it's hard to show on this one but um, also if you have another type of light on there called ambient light this this type of light il illuminates the entire scene regardless of where the light is so there there's a uh, another example of the the light going on there so if I bring the intensity of this ambient down to like two it's gonna be a lot less but um, I'll go over ambient lighting later on and it's it's there's not much to it it's pretty much what I just showed you but I still go over it later so if you take into consideration all those factors the final brightness of the layer is pretty much the sum of its diffuse value the specular and the ambient uh, the ambient light that's going on around there now lights don't have an opacity they have an intensity so if you press T on your keyboard you might think it might go to opacity but now it goes to intensity for a light and that's the easy way to change that and you can go past a hundred and you can go into the negatives so be aware of that factor now lights can be moved around and animated just like your camera and the, uh, the uh, light has also a point of interest just like your camera so if I go into my two views here and check out my light there is the point of interest and if I wanted to I could move that point of interest around Let's see if I can actually grab it there that's how you, you use the selection tool and then that that'll move your point of interest around actually and it's different from the other um, points of interest or anchor points or anything like that where apparently you don't need to use the pan behind tool I was just thinking that because I don't know everything else is like that so that's the introduction that I'm going to give you for lights lights do not need to be made 3d because they are only pretty much useful in 3d layers 2d layers ignore lights and they'll be rendered um, without the light even affecting them so just keep that in mind so go ahead and you can try to play around with the different lights if you want and in the next couple tutorials I'll go over the 
uh, cool stuff that you can do with lighting and how it makes your 3D th scenes look that more realistic and better. So just uh, don't be like me and smash your head off any lights while you're uh, going around working and stuff like that. So um, I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.